whatever it is and write your goal down this is your credit goal write your goal down first and foremost put it in red put it in purple put it in some big bright color what is your goal and then after that you will start working on things that are in there when it comes to your time comes to your credit so <clears throat> identify your issue so whatever your issue could be that could be what collections collections could definitely be an issue it's an issue for plenty of people that have a low credit score um identify that as an issue late payments if you've got any late payments i don't care if it was five years ago if it's on that credit report put it down identify that issue garnishment if you got a garnishment if you had a bankruptcy if you have no credit that's an issue that's a huge issue having no credit is like having bad credit so that's an issue identify your issue i've got 30 inquiries that's an issue that's absolutely an issue so first thing you do identify your issue secondly identify the positives so yes there are some positives and sometimes you know frankly there are no positives on a credit report sometimes there aren't sometimes uh that negative that i said that i have no no credit some people's credit reports are like just collections all they have is collections and so the positive is hey I don't know anybody it just happens to be what it is but identify your positives so some positives how many accounts with perfect payment history do I have go ahead and look at those accounts see what they are that is something positive for you um, for your credit report right and your credit score accounts open longer than five or ten years a positive again right so identify those positives I have both um, credit cards and I have installment loans or have had in the, in the past and they're still on my credit and helping my credit score that's absolutely a positive I've never been late on a car payment a positive so identify those positives my credit utilization is only 15 percent an absolute positive so identify the positives that are on your credit report research number three third thing you want to research so how can you improve your credit although I braggadociously would say to listen to me the 800 credit score man it's okay to go find a different person to listen to I listen to other people I don't actually I may listen to them for other reasons than you do I don't listen to them for advice on how to do this that or other but I may listen to other people to hear their strategy and what they do for particular things or just to see if they're wrong quite frankly or whatever it is so braggadociously i would say listen to me but it's absolutely okay to get a different opinion but don't be uh, paralyzed by over information so that doesn't mean okay look 800 credit score man said x y and z but this dude is saying this that and the other and now i don't know what to do so now i'm frozen in time all right that's not okay that's not okay to be like that all right so uh, maybe a different credit person has just a different opinion on whatever it is that you're seeking out. Uh, I'm keenly aware that a couple of my strategies are not uh, not everyone else is doing or in agreement with. I'm keenly aware of that, uh, but it's my strategy. It's what I have seen work. However, if you're comparing what someone says to what I say, consider this, though. There are 137, 138, 800 credit score man shows. The person you're trying to compare me to, how many YouTube videos have they put out? They got 138, they got 500 or something of that nature. How many YouTube videos have they put out? You ever contact them directly and they responded directly to you? The 800 credit score man does. And let me pause right here and do this caveat right quick. If you did send me something and I did not respond to you, please resend it. And especially if you sent it on some kind of social media, DM or whatever. If you sent it to um, my Instagram, 800 credit score man, and you, it was in the you know, DM portion, inbox portion, I might miss you every now and then. An email, I might listen, miss you every now and then, uh, especially because I got two different emails. And if you listen earlier, earlier, like the first, you know, five ten maybe even the first 50 60 shows that was a different email address i still use it but not as often so send your emails and your questions to 
800 at creditscoreman.com. 800 at creditscoreman.com. So consider those things. Consider those things when you're thinking about or choosing who am I going to listen to. So what's that person's credit score that you're talking to? Now, this is big as far as I'm concerned because I never, I didn't used to think this way. But what is that person's credit score? So, like, if you're taking advice from, let's think of something else. So, if you're, t- if you're taking advice uh, about, um, let's say, stocks. If you're taking stock advice uh, from someone that doesn't own any stock, from a person that doesn't even have a 401k, then you're taking your advice from the wrong person. You need to take your advice from someone that has actually done it and actually doing those things. So I say, what's that person's credit score? I mean, personally, and I mean it personally, like what's that person's personal credit score? Not some general, whatever, whatever. What is their score? I've told you back in the day, you know, I was granting loans and turning down people because their credit wasn't bad when I couldn't get a loan myself because my credit was so bad at the time. So I would not be the person to be taking credit advice from back then. But now it's a whole different day. So at that point, I would have been giving credit advice and I wouldn't have been the person to talk to. I just simply wouldn't. So if you got somebody, you know, that, you know, even if it's a cousin or a friend or whatever, and they've hooked up with a place and now they're doing credit repair and credit restoration and, and this, that, and the other, um, I I highly suggest that you ask them what their credit score is you know what mine is i share it often i post it on social media and all those things so again instagram and facebook 800 credit score man on twitter i'm at credit score underscore man um so do those things so seek out and do some research research listen to other um quote unquote experts people you happen to like whatever it is listen to them now, if you're talking about your cousin and your cousin and nothing wrong with apartment living, of course, everybody doesn't buy a house. Everybody doesn't want a house. Everybody doesn't even want the headache of cutting grass and all this other stuff. But, um, you know, they they don't they don't seem to actually have it together, but they the know it all. They know everything about everything. Maybe you just don't want to take that advice from them, from that particular that particular cousin. Maybe it's somebody else you want to take some advice from, all right? So make sure you do that. Do some research and whatnot. Now, once you do talk to X, Y, and Z or whoever you talk to, come on back to the 800 credit score. Come on back to the 800 credit score, man, um, and let's discuss. You say, hey, I contacted so-and-so, and they said, blah, 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 blah. Let's discuss it. They could be right, or I could agree with them. Or I cannot agree with them. So um, let's do that. We do some research. Create, and this is so important, the next step. Create a strategy slash plan and stick to it. You got to be able to stick to your plan. Stick to the plan. Create your strategy and your plan. We're talking holistically, right? We're not talking about um, let's just get a couple collections off the credit report and you know see what happens. Of your whole strategy and plan, stick to that particular plan. All right. Then here's what you do: you ev- you reevaluate that plan regularly and adjust it if necessary. So you might need to adjust your plan. So um, it's life, right? It's life. Who predicted that you be sitting at home, social distancing for the last three, four weeks, maybe? an additional three, four weeks. Whoever heard of social distancing in 2019? So who could have predicted this kind of thing right now? So you might have to make some adjustments. Maybe you are working. Maybe you aren't working. If you are getting paid and sitting at home, because there are people that are doing that, they're still getting paid right now and sitting at home. Hopefully you've done some things like i said a lot of people are calling me about their credit and whatnot because they're sitting at home so hopefully you're not spending all the money that you're used to getting in because you're not buying that lunch here you're not buying that lunch there every day your commute is down so you're not um, getting gas or paying that um, bill for your uh, subway card or bus card or, or you know ubering everywhere you're not going out to eat as much so going out to eat 
I think it's more expensive than even if you do takeout. You know, if you're doing takeout every day, that's different. There's not necessarily that 15% tip that you put on it. You're not necessarily getting that extra drink when you're, um, you know, you're getting it delivered to your home. So you might be saving a couple bucks. You may look at your bank account and realize, hey, I got a couple bucks saved. Maybe you need to do something with that. You know, start that emergency fund we talked about. Pay off some of the debt that we talked about. All of those things. And I think you'll come out of this particular situation that we're in knowing what you can or what you want versus what you need when it comes to um, spending additional money that you may or may not have or going back to your regular old lifestyle that you had before. So anyway, that was to reevaluate regularly and adjust if necessary, if necessary. Oh, and here's another thing and really pretty much the last thing. If you have a setback, if you've got a setback, you've got your goal, You've got your strategy, you've looked at your positive, you looked at your negatives, and you're setting that course, but you happen to have a setback. Just like I said, this social distancing could cause you a setback. If you're not getting paid, that's a setback. If you're not eligible for the unemployment, it's a setback. Even if you are eligible for the unemployment, but you're not getting the extra 600 bucks or whatever it is, that's a setback, right? So if you have a setback, don't give up. Do not give up. Do not throw your hands up and say, this ain't worth it. Why me? Things always happen. You missed a payment or something. You you forgot to make a payment. Um, Something went to collections. It's not the end of the world. It's absolutely not the end of the world. What sayings, what, what, um, it's just not the end of the world. So what sayings, you know, what quotes fit right here? Something like, um, (laughs) <laughs> something like it's like riding a bike or get back up on that horse or you don't lose until you quit a quitters never win and winners never quit pick one but don't give up do not give up trust me on the other side of bad credit when you get to the good credit when you get to when you get from bad to fair to good to excellent credit it's absolutely worth it You're sitting at home all day. You see those commercials now they're running talking about uh, Kia and Toyota and Ford will pay your first three payments or pay your first four payments or delay payments on your new car. All of those things. Had you been in the right spot right now and you wanted that new car or you needed that new car, it's no better time than right now to go out and get that bad boy. There's just no better time. If you're going to get three payments paid for paid for i'm not talking we're going to put it on the back end we're going to pay for your first three payments say your car knows 500 bucks that's 1500 bucks that they're going to pay for and then what are they doing they're taking another three months and they'll defer it for you so you could be driving a new car and have put if you had somewhere to go and had put twelve thousand miles on it before you actually had to make a payment before you actually have to make payment if you had your credit together already so it's being prepared if you're prepared for it or if you're ready you don't have to get ready so if you had already done that this would be the perfect spot perfect time if you wanted to go out and get a car because they're giving those kinds of deals up right so again holistically speaking you got to always think about what's everything going on when it comes to your credit you cannot piecemeal it so it's perfectly fine perfectly fine if you send me an email and say look i've got this specific question about this specific thing i can tell if you that's your only issue that's your only issue however i can also tell like i said if you have more than one issue lay it all out lay it all out i trust me i look at way too many credit reports and emails to want to spread your business or care about your one specific thing And not to mention, a lot of people in your boat, a lot of people are in the same boat. People think I'm the only one with bad credit or I'm the, uh, this is the worst credit in the world. Trust me, you you don't have the worst credit. I probably haven't seen the worst credit in the world and you probably don't have the worst credit in the world. Things will work out for you if you create that plan, you follow that plan and you get good advice on what to do. All right. So look, do me a favor. Do me a favor and go look at your credit report. 
I actually do that last week for me as a birthday present to me. 